Dear ladies and gentlemen, this is not the first and hopefully not the last video of mine in which I was sharing with you some information about Soviet and post-Soviet Russian infiltration of the West. Western high schools, Western media, etc. So let me repeat, if you haven't seen some of my previous videos, that starting with the Bolshevik coup of 1917, the Soviet Union spent millions and millions of dollars that had been stolen from the starving population of the Soviet Union in order to hire agents in the West and also to find and use the so-called useful idiots who would help spreading Soviet propaganda. As we know, in 1991 the Soviet Union collapsed. However, Russia never stopped its aggressive propaganda all over the world. And it was especially, and it still is especially successful, in Western Europe and in North America. Today I would like to take a look at an example of Russian imperialist propaganda within Vatican, within Roman Catholic Church. This is pretty painful for me, because I'm a practicing Catholic, baptized in St. Albert Church in Riga, Latvia, that's in Northern Europe, And, uh, yes, I'm a sinner, but I'm a devoted Roman Catholic, and I will die as a Roman Catholic, no matter what. No matter what's going on in Vatican, and no matter what the representatives, some representatives of Roman Catholic clergy, are doing and saying. However, today I would like to get involved in a sort of online polemic with Brother Daniel Nolan, a representative of Roman Catholic clergy, who recently vocally supported Russian invasion of Ukraine. I don't know willingly or unwillingly, but this doesn't matter. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear brother Daniel, I have to respect you by default for one simple reason. You are a representative of Roman Catholic clergy. There is another reason, by the way. I found out that you are a former U.S. Marine. Well, I also know that once Marine is always Marine. And as a former soldier, I have to respect you as well. By the way, not only as a former soldier, but also due to the fact that one of my best friends of my childhood ended up his life being a U.S. Marine officer. And I sincerely hope that what you are going to say, and actually what you have already said in support of Vladimir Putin and his invasion of Ukraine, has been made by mistake. Well, errare humanum est. Humans are often mistaken. But it actually doesn't matter whether you have done it willingly or unwillingly. The harm is still there. Because those people, your flock, your congregation, they trust you, they believe you. Uh, they think by default that you know what you're talking about. And that makes it really, really, really harmful. So now let's go step by step. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I wish to speak today about some uh, current events taking place in the world, uh, specifically the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Well, this is a very important topic indeed. We have heard much from the media on this invasion, and it seems nearly the entire world is united in condemnation. 
And certainly judging from Catholic principles, unjustified aggression is to be condemned. The loss of life is to be deplored. Military force should only ever be used as a last resort. This is absolutely true as well. And so these questions should be at the forefront of our minds. Is Russia, is Russia justified in this attack? Was this a last resort? And I honestly have no idea, because I've been given no information by the media, along with everybody else. Good point. It's really good that you recognize that you have no idea what you are going to talk about. Well, let me specify something. Although I am Roman Catholic, I'm not a specialist in the sphere of faith and spirituality. In fact, I'm a sinner. God made me a sinner to make some fat man thinner. I'm kidding, of course. But in any case, I wouldn't dare arguing with you, a clergyman, about the Holy Bible, about the principles of the Church, and about spirituality. However, in my capacity of a political science and historian, I probably know a little bit more in this sphere than you do. That's why, actually, I took the liberty of uh, arguing with you on this topic. This is not a topic of discussion. I don't see a balanced consideration of both sides. I see a rush to condemn. And it would be foolish to take the position, we don't need a discussion. Russia has invaded a sovereign nation, and that is never acceptable. Stop. You have just said that it's not acceptable. So if it's not acceptable, why are you supporting it? And why are you trying to push to accept it? That's something I don't know. I'm confused, brother. If that's our reasoning, we've just condemned ourselves. Have we forgotten so soon the US, U.S. invasion of Iraq twice, as well as Afghanistan? And let us not forget either Korea or Vietnam. My dearest brother in Christ, Please, 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 don't try to compare what is incomparable. The US invasion of uh, Iraq was made in support of Kuwait that had been taken over by Iraq. The US involvement in Korea was to protect anti-communist South Korea from communist North Korea. The US involvement in Vietnam was to protect South Vietnam from the aggression from the North. Whom was Russia trying to protect by invading Ukraine? Do you have an answer to that question? No, you don't. In fact, every war in the United States in the past hundred years has been waged by invading another country. And we've killed innocent civilians every single time as well. That's why war needs to be a last resort. Brother, we are not talking about the USA. We are talking about Russia. So just because Russia has invaded Ukraine, just because innocent lives have been lost, that is not enough to determine if Russia should be condemned. Why not, brother? Why do you think it's not enough? With major world events such as this, we cannot be so shallow as to rush to judgment without knowing the facts. Then make your research and find out the facts. It's not that hard. But from what I've seen from the media, they have completely bypassed any attempt to give us facts. It seems rather that the media wants us not to think much, but to feel much. Well, brother, here I have no choice but to completely agree with you. And this would explain why so much supposed footage coming from Ukraine uh, is recycled. Like explosions, buildings, crying children. These are from seven or eight years ago. These have been shown before in other wars. And this is not true. I sincerely hope that you are just repeating someone else's lies. But again, believe me, this is not true. If we've learned anything from the media for the past two years, it ought to be that they cannot be trusted with their stream of non-stop lies. 
about the COVID crisis. And here, my brother in Christ, I also totally agree with you. And I also totally agree with your point of view on the COVID madness, which you expressed in a few of your previous videos. And now it seems that as their narrative around COVID is unraveling, uh, now they've got, they need a new global crisis to focus everybody's attention on. And it seems uh, that Russia's invasion of Ukraine is precisely that. You've got the point. But, 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 it's a little bit more complicated situation than you're trying to portray. And I have to say, I, I, I feel, uh, I see this, this um, painfully hypocritical attitude about the media. Uh, namely, this, this inspiration we're supposed to feel about seeing the Ukrainian people fighting for their democracy. Stand with Ukraine. Stand with freedom. Fly Ukrainian flag from your house where we were locked down for the past two years. Our jobs were taken away, our freedoms were taken away, our dignity was taken away because we would not follow the totalitarian dictates of our government, but cheer for somebody else's freedom. And again, you got the point. But you know what? If we cannot fight for our own freedom here, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't support other people who have got to fight for their freedom and sacrificing their lives for it, unlike us. Now, I'm not defending uh, Putin's invasion of, of Ukraine by any means. I'm not saying that he, he was right to invade or should have invaded. Thank goodness that you are telling us that you are not trying to defend him. However, in fact, you are. And that's very sad that all the Hollywood elites are all calling for support of Ukraine. Uh, the global elites, uh, George Soros, Klaus Schwab, they're all saying we should be united uh, with Ukraine against Russia. Totally concur with you, my dear brother in Christ. Those so-called elites are disgusting, and in most cases they are wrong. However, you probably know that even a broken clock, at least twice a day, shows the right time, right? So, so this is probably the case. If those corrupt, decadent and rotten elites are saying that two times two means four, it doesn't mean that two times two is five. This makes me think, okay, I'm probably going to be supporting Russia. Wrong conclusion, brother. Absolutely wrong. Um, no, it's important. It is actually very important to make a distinction between the Russia of today and the Soviet Union of 30 years ago. They are not the same. And what made the Soviet, evil, uh, the, the Soviet Union evil was primarily the three pillars of communism, atheism, and moral corruption. I mean, there's many other reasons, but, but those three primarily. Um, and this, this began back in the 1920s with the Bolshevik Revolution. Now, the evil of communism, of course, is the denial of the natural law right to own private property. Everybody has a right to own things, to, to fulfill their state in life, to provide for themselves and their family. Every, everybody has a right to private property. Communism takes that away. Uh, everybody ought to worship God. Everybody has a religious sense and knowledge that God exists and he must be worshipped. In the Soviet Union, atheism was the state religion. Okay, now you are trying to compare the USSR with post-Soviet Russia. You know what I can tell you? Both were evil empires. Both systems were disgusting and are disgusting. And you know, I'm not so sure which of the two was worse, the USSR or the contemporary Russian Federation the so-called Russian Federation, which is neither Russian nor Federation. Well, yes, atheism was the state religion of the USSR. Now, formally, formally, Christianity, Orthodox Christianity, became sort of a state religion. But is it a real religion? That's a good question. We'll talk about a little bit later. As for the property, you know who owns most of the property in contemporary Russia? The descendants, grandchildren and children of those 
who deprived the Soviet population of their property. Those gangsters and bandits became oligarchs. So the majority of Russian population do not have any private property, just like they didn't have it under the Soviets. The flag has changed. The essence, the criminal essence of the regime hasn't changed at all. Uh, uh, Catholic, the church is orthodox, Russian orthodox, every religion was persecuted. Churches were either destroyed or converted for secular purposes. Not all of them, by the way. It's an exaggeration. And then, of course, the moral corruption of the Soviet Union. Uh, you, may be, you may not know this, but uh, the Soviet government was the first in Europe to legalize abortion in 1920. And that, at that same time, they also removed laws prohibiting homosexuality and other perversions of nature. A great moral degradation was introduced. And this, this lack of respect for life is what led to the horrific uh, deaths of 20 million, 20 million people by Stalin and Lenin and so on, through executions, the gulag, and so forth. What you are saying, brother, is only partially true. The abortion was legalized in 1917 and so was homosexuality. However, since Stalin came to power in 1924, the abortion was prohibited, and so was homosexuality. Homosexuals were put behind the bars, just like the members of anti-communist opposition. And also women who hired someone to perform illegal abortion were put in jail. And of course, those paramedic specialists who were performing abortion were put behind the bars as well. So again, you are talking about something you do not know. So it was a great victory for the world when this evil Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. And it was an even greater victory because it wasn't as if uh, the Soviet Union uh, simply shrank back to Russia. Uh, the Soviet Union ended. Russia today is no longer communist, is no longer atheist, and is no longer morally corrupt institutionally. Indeed, it was a great victory that in 1991 the USSR collapsed. And yes, it shrank to the limits of the contemporary Russian Federation, the so-called Russian Federation. However, the contemporary Russia is way more morally corrupt than the USSR was. And officially it's not an atheist country. However, they don't believe in anything except gold and money. Money is their new god. And they want more and more money, no matter how many people would they have to sacrifice for that. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, the current uh, government of Russia is a parliamentary democracy. There are different... Um different uh, uh, um, uh, was it uh, political bodies they elect a president <laughs> you call that democracy it's not democracy it's a kleptocracy a kleptocratic dictatorship of criminals and thieves uh, it seems that uh, Vladimir Putin he's been accused of wanting to return uh, Christendom for wanting to return to the morality of the old Holy Mother Russia he has publicly stated that one of Europe's problems is forgetting its own Christian roots. Holy smoke, what a bullshit. Sorry my language. Don't believe a single word of what Comrade Putin is saying. That character has been lying throughout all of his life. He is adamantly against homosexuality, adamantly against abortion. And this has made him extremely unpopular with progressive liberal European elites. My brother in Christ, who told you that he is against abortion? Who told you that he is against homosexuality? Well, as far as the homosexuality is concerned, there are rumors that Putin is somehow involved in that himself. But even if it's not true, I can tell you, homosexuality has been and is flourishing in Russian jails, in the Russian armed forces, and in Russian secret forces, FSB, KGB. It has been flourishing there since the last decade of the Soviet Union and is still flourishing there. As for their abortions, my goodness, 
95% of all Russian females experienced between one and five abortions. And you are telling me that he is against abortion. Give me a break, brother. And give a break to your flock. Putin has rebuilt thousands of churches in Russia, uh, Russian Orthodox churches, including the Cathedral of the Armed Forces for the Russian military. Yes, he rebuilt a number of churches. But what kind of churches? Are those Christian churches? Well, if you look at the so-called Russian Army Cathedral, it looks more like a satanic temple. Look! Look! As far as the priests are concerned, the so-called priests, starting with the late decades of the Soviet Union, all of them were the KGB officers. And as of today, the majority of them are still connected with the Russian intelligence and counterintelligence. And by the way, homosexuality is also flourishing uh, within the Russian Orthodox Church. A good man, Russian Orthodox priest Andrei Kuraev, tried to unveil that. And he suffered ostracism and he was actually kicked out of the church. Maybe I should someday translate some of his videos for you, for you personally, my brother. Here are some quotes from uh, President Vladimir Putin. He says of, of the increasing encroachment of the EU, policies are being per pursued that place a multi-child family and a same-sex partnership on the same level, a faith in God and a belief in Satan on the same level. This is the path to degradation. Oh, that's a correct statement. But again, as I already mentioned before, even broken clock can at least twice a day show the right time. If Putin says that 2 times 2 is 4, it definitely doesn't mean that it's 5. So some of his statements are correct. He also said, without the values at the core of Christianity, without moral norms that have been shaped over millennia, people will inevitably lose their human dignity. And this is also true. 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 3 is 9. 
So the other side of this, this conflict in Ukraine, is Ukraine itself, the country. Uh, and this became an independent nation once again after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 91. And it has had a government friendly to Russia up until the year 2014. In this year, there occurred the Revolution of Dignity. This overthrew the pro-Russian government and established a pro-European Union government in its place. And another poll statement, the Revolution of Dignity in Ukraine that occurred in 2014 was not to get rid of a pro-Russian or Russian-friendly government, but to get rid of a kleptocratic government, of a criminal junta that took over the country as a result of falsified elections and started robbing and terrorizing Ukrainian people. Unlike Russians who tolerate Putin's regime, Ukrainians have proven to have way more dignity. And yes, in 2014, they overthrew the criminal gang that was running their country for quite a while. And this revolution, the Revolution of Dignity, uh, was financed uh, by George Soros. How do you know, brother? No, really. Can you prove your statement by any documents or evidence whatsoever? I don't think you can. Then why are you saying that to your flock? There's a reason he has to be supporting his interests in Ukraine. And it wasn't the only revolution in former Soviet Union nations. Many of those, those nations, Georgia uh, and, and so on, they've all had revolutions fomented to try to overthrow the pro-Russian governments to destabilize Russia and to expand NATO. And this is absolute and pure lie. People of Georgia and people of Ukraine overthrew the criminal gangs that were running their nations and they didn't care about Russia. You know, revolution of dignity in Georgia or revolution of dignity in Ukraine cannot destabilize Russia, China, America or Papua New Guinea. So Russia uh, declared this rebellion illegitimate and subsequently invaded the Crimea, if you remember that from a few years ago. Lovely, just lovely, fantastic. Russia doesn't recognize the change of power in a neighbor country in a foreign country, in a sovereign nation, and using that as a pretext, invades it and annexes part of its territory. And you are supporting that, right? Also at that time in 2014, uh, the two regions of Donetsk and Luhansk, uh, Ukrainian regions, declared their independence uh, from Ukraine and their loyalty to Russia. And this became the start of the Donbass War, which has continued up to the crisis currently today. And who was financing that rebellion? No. You don't know, eh? I can tell you, it actually was not a rebellion of the people of Donbass, but of a few criminal gangs that came from Russia. Two groups of criminals, terrorists and maniacs who terrorized the population of those two provinces of Ukraine and finally took over them with the help of the Russian troops and Russian secret service. The current president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, was elected in 2019 and has been very active in moving politics away from Russia and towards the EU. Prior to being president, he was in the entertainment industry. He was an actor in 2015 in a political satire in which he played the role of the president of Ukraine. Rather ironic. Uh, his public policies include, uh, President Zelensky supports the free distribution of med medicinal marijuana, free abortion, and the legalization of prostitution. He's an active supporter of homosexuality, transgenderism, LGBTQ, gay pride parades, and is an adamant supporter of the New World Order. Point number one. Yes, Ukrainian President Zelensky was an actor, and so was Ronald Reagan, who actually crushed the Soviet Union. You probably know that Ronald Reagan had been an actor as well. Or do you prefer professional bureaucrats, professional politicians? Well, your current President Biden has been a professional politician and professional bureaucrat. Do you like him? Do you like his agenda? 
I highly doubt, so actually I know that you don't like him. Point number two. Who told you that President Zelensky supports abortion, homosexuality, transgendering and the new world order? To the best of my knowledge, it's absolutely not true. He never ever mentioned anything that could be considered the support of transgenderism, homosexuality, abortion, etc., etc. Of course, he cannot openly condemn it, because President Zelensky wants his country to be somehow associated with the European Union. And if you want to be associated with the contemporary West, you cannot condemn transgendering, homosexuality, etc. And it's not his fault. It's your fault, if you don't like it. Because your countries, your nations, are supporting what you have just mentioned. Ukraine and its president never vocally expressed that support. As for the support of legalized prostitution, the idea of legalized prostitution, again, I never heard of Zelensky saying a word about that. But maybe he said, I, maybe I haven't heard that, simply. But what's wrong about legalized prostitution? I personally am also in favor of legalized prostitution. Or do you want it to be illegal? I don't get it. I, haven't, I, I won't talk about it here, but the, the New World Order, uh, the, uh, the Great Reset, uh, the Davos Conferences, Klaus Schwab, George Soros, these are all members, and, and thousands like them, trying to establish a one world government. This is not a conspiracy theory. They are open. This is what they want to do. And there is a very disturbing parallel between this new world order, this one world government, and the old Soviet Union. Because they have the three of the same evil pillars. Communism, atheism, moral corruption. Perhaps you've heard of like uh, the Agenda 2030. By 2030, you'll own nothing and be happy. Right? This is communism. This is the old Soviet Union. From each according to his ability, to each according to their need. We've heard that before. Uh, in, the new, in the New World Order, there is no God except your engineers, your social and your genetic engineers, by the way. Uh, they have these, these um, uh, bio programs which are desi designed to change human DNA. Scientists saying that in the future, uh, evolution is not going to happen randomly, but by intelligent design, their intelligent design. And of course, there is the moral corruption of the New World Order, New World Order, as we've heard, uh, uh, the, the sexual corruption, uh, abortion, and so on. Uh, so this is not good. This is not good for the Ukrainian people. True, absolutely true. I concur with you. It's not good for Ukrainian people. It's not good for anyone. But do you think it's better for Ukrainian people to be burned alive as a result of carpet bombing? Or is it good for Ukrainian women and children to be raped, or impaled, or disemboweled is still alive? That's what the Russian army is doing in Ukraine. That's what the Russian army was doing in Georgia as well, starting with the early 90s, when it was already Russia, not the Soviet Union. And then here, here is my conundrum. Is I do not like war or the loss of life. But I do not like either moral corruption and mortal sin. Good for you, brother. Good for you. I don't like those things either. So who is worse? Vladimir Putin, who has physically invaded Ukraine, or Zelensky, who has spiritually invaded Ukraine? Vladimir Putin, believe me, because he invaded Ukraine both physically and spiritually. And now, let me offer you a record where Klaus Schwab explains to you how Putin is connected with him and with his New World Order system. Well, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin and so on, they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. Do we think God needs a lesson in mercy? Apparently, he thinks an invasion by a foreign power is less of an evil than moral corruption. Yes, true. Two times two is four. 
What's worse, putting a body in a graveyard or putting a soul in hell? Scripture has a passage dedicated to answering this very question. Right? Fear ye not he who harms the body, but he who after harming body hath power to cast into hell. So as I said, I, I do not want to see the Ukrainian people suffering physical violence, but even less do I want to see them suffering spiritual violence. And let us remember, in the Old Testament, God punished the Israelites for turning aside from his law, for committing wickedness, for committing evil. Among them, child sacrifice, as we are told in the Psalms. They gave up their sons and their daughters, right, passing them through fire, as the pagan nations. And what was the punishment? How did God punish his chosen people? Jeremiah uh, chapter 25, verse 9. Behold, I will summon the people of the north, my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, declares the Lord. And I will bring them against this land and its inhabitants. I will completely destroy them and make them an object of horror and scorn and everlasting ruin. Thus far the words of Almighty God. True, those are the words of the Almighty God. But I'm sorry, did Ukrainians ever perform human sacrifice? No, not at all. But your beloved Russians have been doing that, and they are still doing that. The Russian elites, I mean. And uh, by the way, your beloved Mr. Putin, or Comrade Putin, and his entourage are involved in thousands of satanic rituals that are connected with shamanism, even the voodoo cult. And they are performing such sacrifices that God should punish them for sure. And he will, no doubt. Is Vladimir Putin in the hand of Satan? Or rather, is he in the hand of God as his instrument? Your friend Putin is definitely in the hand of Saturn, not of God. And he is clearly Saturn's instrument, believe me. This could be a great mercy of God, one which he has not shown yet to our country. So, do you want your country to be invaded by Russia as well? Our task as Catholics, as Christians, is to spread the gospel to the world, not democracy or the American way of life. That's true. So please, spell the gospel. And not Putinist satanic propaganda, please. We are to promote a love of God and respect for his laws and to oppose grave moral evils and be willing to die, as all the saints have said, rather than commit a mortal sin. Then do it, brother. Just do it. So when something happens in Ukraine, like an invasion, and we see people unhappy in this life, that's the greater evil. That's twisted logic. We have to have the right priorities, spiritual over the physical, and able to think rightly about evil. That's so true. So please, do our almighty God a favor, and think rightly about good and evil. You know, we weep. It is right to weep over 60 children killed by a stray Russian missile that hits a maternity ward. Thank you, brother. Thank you for allowing us to weep over Ukrainian kids killed by Russian bombs and missiles and over the Ukrainian girls who were raped by the Russian liberators. Thank you. But if we weep for that, how much more ought we to weep for 60 million children killed by abortion? Dear brother, do you know how many million children were killed by abortion in your beloved Russia? Try to find it out. It's not that hard. Invest some time in that fact-finding mission. How many Ukrainian maternity wards has Zelensky emptied by his pro-abortion policies? Far more damage than any missiles. You definitely don't know what you're talking about, my beloved brother in Christ. Zelensky has no pro-abortion policy. I hope you don't know that. Putin's war is not against the Ukrainian people. He told them, fight for yourselves, not for the new world order. 
Really? Then can you explain, please, how comes that practically every Ukrainian man is ready to fight and die for his country, for Ukraine, not for your new world order? Vladimir Putin is encouraging the Ukrainians to reject Zelensky's evil public policies, and I agree. <laughs> no comments, no comments. I cannot swear in the presence of a clergyman. Accordingly, I cannot comment this nonsense, this bullshit, sorry. So in the end, I don't know. Exactly. You do not know, brother. So why are you trying to fool your congregation? I don't know that either. I can't say that this invasion is justified, but I pray that God's most holy will be accomplished, whatever that may be. And so I ask all of you to join me in praying that these hostilities will cease soon, that hearts are converted, and that the Ukrainian people receive a government that respects life promotes right religion and right living under whatever form, democracy or otherwise. And this is not your business, my dear brother in Christ. And not mine, by the way. Ukrainian people somehow will find their own way to the decent and responsible government. And without Russian help, they don't need to be slaughtered, raped, and disemboweled by the Russian liberators to elect the right government. Amen. Well, my dear brother Daniel, you are a clergyman, a Roman Catholic clergyman. And being a clergyman, you should not spread disinformation and satanic propaganda among your flock. You know what? As a Catholic, I'm not supposed to quote the Holy Bible, but let me make an exception. I'm going to quote something. I'm going to quote the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Sorry, cannot do it by heart, so I have to read to read it out loudly for you, and for the listeners, of course, as well. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. That's the Holy Bible. Please think about that quote. God bless you all. And that's it for today. Bye-bye.